Hey guys, so I'm gonna be, this is gonna be hopefully one of the first of my new sorts of videos responding to content that's more outside of the SJW range, although obviously I'm still gonna be responding to SJW content. So this should be a fun one. This is from Rebel Media, and I know some of you guys might like Rebel Media, although they've done some pretty stupid things lately, like interrupting that Caesar play. Like, come on, guys, it's just a play. It's just a play. Get over it. Stop being triggered. But I know some of you guys might like Rebel Media, but they do stupid things, and like any skeptical person would do, we should call them out when they do dumb things. And this is one of them. This is a video about how soy is apparently feminizing the West. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> so let's just get into the video. There's not really a lot to <laughs> explain here. And to those critics who are so pessimistic about our economy, I say, don't be economic girly man. <laughs> oh, just the pain. The pain that man was governor of my state when I was alive. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I mean, I did like Terminator Judgment Day and the original Total Recall. I really enjoyed the original Total Recall, but otherwise, no. That was the 2004 RNC when Arnold Schwarzenegger coined the term economic girly man. But is it just me or right now? In 2017, are there more girly men in our politics and culture than ever? Gone are the days of hypermasculinity, where male archetypes and role models were on a perpetual quest defined by corporal daring and monetary conquest, those very traits responsible for so much that is good and right in the world. Now, Male feminism is a thing. Male prime ministers with effeminate lisps use the world stage not to discuss war or trade, but to talk about breeding future generations of male feminists. Uh, he is going to be grow up to be a feminist just like dad. And by the way, we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Men and women should use it to describe <laughs> themselves anytime they want. Okay, so they're using examples of male feminists and Trudeau and stuff. Okay, so I get your point. Feminism is stupid, at least contemporary feminism, and male feminism is stupid, and that stuff is stupid. I get it, that's stupid. But isn't you making a video and bitching about it? Making it like, oh, it's such a pressing contemporary issue. Isn't that kind of stupid too? I mean, I get it. Feminism has done some genuinely harmful things. It's led to this entire intersectionality thing. And it's led to some really bad laws. I'm not saying that feminism hasn't had a huge effect on society, it has, but you're focusing on these really petty things about it. Focus on the important things like people spreading the wage gap myth and all that. People genuinely believing all of these myths. Or like the one in five women are raped and like, women are afraid to go outside their houses because of that. Like you're not focusing on the important parts of it. They're saying like they're not talking about serious politics, they're just talking about irrelevant frivolous stuff. Well, you're doing the exact same thing and you're supposed to be a political channel, so you're just doing the exact same thing they are. Congratulations. And don't get me wrong, standing up for a woman is inherently manly, but how did we get to a point in which a man's idea of protesting violent rapes includes donning a mini skirt while in heels? Today, more and more men are enrolling in women's studies classes. More men are becoming stay-at-home dads, sending their wives off to work in the morning. Okay, so the women's studies classes, I agree, is stupid. Women's studies is basically a way to waste your education. But what's wrong with being a stay-at-home dad? I mean, if you're a stay-at-home mom, for example, you're doing a job. Sure, you're not getting paid for it, but you're doing a job. You're taking care of your kids. That is something beneficial in life. Same thing with being a stay-at-home dad. What's wrong with that? How is that by any means analogous to wasting your college education? This makes no sense. And more men are becoming, well, women, full stop, as evidenced in the past five years alone, where in the United States, the transgender population has exactly doubled. Assuming that's true, we could attribute that to a number of factors I would say mostly it's because of the whole transgender phenomenon, but pushing that aside, if we're talking about genuine transgenderism, that's not 
men becoming women, that's transgender women transitioning. That's not feminine men, that's transgender women. That's a completely different issue. Why do you have to throw that in there? So why is this happening? Well, one theory might surprise you. Yes, men in school and the workplace are taught misguided sensitivity and courage to share their feelings as opposed to being aggressive in achieving his goals. Okay, so I will agree that there is a certain pressure on men from feminism, and I've talked about this with the Prince of Queens towards trans men. There is a pressure in that coming from feminism where men are genuinely treated badly by feminists. That is a problem. But you're not focusing on that. You're focusing on the fact that men are feminine. That's what you care about. You're not even focusing on like the abusive behavior like, oh, well, they're encouraged to share their feelings. You're not focusing on, on the fact of being treated badly. Yes. Their TV shows and movies portray women as the new man, physically, economically, and sexually, hard-bodied and smart, rich and aggressive, and as that's all as opposed to her dorky, if not docile, male counterpart. We know the cultural reasons why girly men are on the rise. Oh, oh my god, the movies are portraying women as strong. Oh my god, movies, video games, movies. You sound like a feminist. You sound like a feminist. You sound like <laughs> you sound like Anita Sarkeesian. Who cares? It's movies. It's movies. Who cares? Who cares? And hey, badass women in movies are hot. Let's just get <laughs> they're hot. I don't think I need to make any more for kids from that. But what about the science? Well, as it turns out, it's not just behavior, but biology that's changing in today's man as well. According to international scientists, there's a worldwide deficit occurring right now that no one's talking about, a deficit in testosterone. According to cited studies across America and Europe, there has been a substantial drop in men's testosterone levels since about the 1980s. According to Dr. Thomas Travison and his colleagues behind one such study, the average levels of the male hormone are dropping by about 1% per year. This means that a 40-year-old man in 2017 would have testosterone levels about 20% lower than a 40-year-old in 1997. Okay, these statistics seem a little faulty to me. I'm not buying it, but even if that was true and men have less testosterone in their system, a lack of testosterone doesn't necessarily make you more girly. First of all, a lack of testosterone doesn't necessarily mean you automatically have more estrogen. That just means you have less testosterone. Now, we can see what happens when men have less testosterone when they get older. When they get older, they basically go through the male version of menopause. I think it's called andropause. And it's not quite as documented as menopause is because it doesn't have as much of an effect on men as menopause does on women because there's still, there's a lot of men are still fertile, but they still experience side effects. For example, they can become moody. Some of them do become infertile. A lot of them experience male pattern baldness, things like that. So they don't become more feminine or anything like that. They just experience side effects. It's only when estrogen enters their system that they become more feminine. So for men to truly become more feminine estrogen would have to enter their system. I mean, uh, this conversation is so mind-dumbingly stupid. And researchers say that the drop in testosterone is not even related to age. They observed the same trend regardless of what age level was studied. Men in their 20s had lower T, as did men in their 60s. And as a whole, testosterone levels have declined by about 50% since the 1950s. In other words, your grandfather probably had roughly twice the testosterone you have. So if your grandfather's testosterone was, say, 750 nanograms per deciliter and yours is roughly 400, what's your grandson's going to be? Okay, I'm really not buying this. Something seems really fishy about this. Just the way this is being presented and she's going off of one study, I'm really not buying this. But even if this is true, she's missing a key factor. And I know this because I have an endocrinologist who I talk with frequently. The range for a healthy biological man is actually 200 to 900 nanograms per deciliter. 
Yeah, it's a very wide range. I'm not sure exactly why, but the normal range for a man testosterone is very, very variable. It's a huge range. It's huge. So, this whole thing where she's like, oh, it's a huge crisis. No, from person to person, it's a huge range. It's a really important question and one that's now worrying clinical researchers across the globe. And, well, it doesn't even stop there. Male sperm count is also way down. Widely publicized Danish research has found that the number of sperm in each milliliter of semen has halved since World War II. So that today, roughly one in five young men have a low sperm count, which sort of sucks when you consider that low count or poor sperm quality is the reason for infertility in about 20% of cases. This at a time when the West is already suffering from fearfully low birth rates. All right, so. Why is this happening? Well, researchers aren't exactly sure. Some of the working hypotheses have included the rising prevalence of obesity, as well as a sharp decline in cigarette smoking, which typically increases testosterone levels. Wait, is she implicitly <laughs> encouraging smoking? Did you do realize that smoking is really unhealthy, right? However, these factors only amount for a really small percentage of the observed difference. So now, researchers, well, they're looking to the food we eat, especially foods that cause changes in our hormones. And bad news, there's one ingredient baked into most of our foods that might be causing the uptick in girly men. Oh no, here we go. Soy. The truth is 93% of the soy that we consume is bad for us. It decreases testosterone levels and increases estrogen levels, wherein the negative health effects have consequences for both men and women. As a man, if you're consuming extra estrogen, it's gonna give you more female characteristics. And if you're a woman, well, it's going to increase your chances of things like breast cancer, cervical cancer, and other types of hormone imbalance related ailments. Okay, that is absolutely true. Soy actually does create a synthetic form of estrogen, it's not the same thing as the biological form of estrogen, and it actually does increase women's chances of getting reproductive cancers. That is absolutely true, that's like the one true thing she said in this entire video. Let me explain. First, the history. So, soy became popularized in the West after positive health benefits such as a way longer lifespan was observed in populations with soy-rich diets, namely Japan. Okay, I'm gonna skip this part of the video. She just goes in the history of how soy became popular in the West and stuff. It's irrelevant to the rest of the video. Soy protein decreases testosterone levels in otherwise healthy young men. Studies in which men as young as 19 started consuming hefty amounts of soy when suddenly all interest in sex was lost and erectile dysfunction was experienced. One year after stopping the soy consumption, by the way, normal hormonal profiles were fully regained. Studies that indicate infertile men that eat more soy have lower sperm counts just across the board, while other studies on animals like this one, this one, and this one found that isoflavins in soy can cause breast cancer, another sign of overblown estrogen. Meantime, researchers also found that male rats who received soybean feed while still in the womb, they had problems in sexual organ development. And again, that was found in more than just one study. Okay, this is getting kind of boring. She's looking at actual studies that do show hormone imbalances in men who eat a lot of soy. Now, I could actually believe that, considering that soy does actually create estrogen. And estrogen does create hormone imbalances when men take too much of it. However, what does this have anything to do with the men being more feminine, with femininity being accepted more in Western culture. I have no problem with femininity in men being accepted more in Western culture. Why is that a problem? Oh my god. This is so... The, the connection here, she's making, she's reaching so much. Look, I'm no doctor, but you don't need to be one to read the reports and draw your own conclusions. What I do know is this. Traditional gender rules have gone the way of the dodo, and I personally am really over talking about social constructs. Maybe it's time we consider more than just our politics and our culture and ask if what's in our fridge is feeding the feminization 
of our society. So yeah, that was this annoying lady <laughs> just rambling on about soy and how apparently feminine men are this horrible bad thing. And she threw in social constructs in there. <sighs> like, she's throwing in the whole feminism and gender as a social construct there to try to say that this is a bad thing, that this is connected to the whole intersectionality and feminism thing. No, feminine men is not inherently a bad thing. This is when I think the whole anti-SW thing goes too far. There's a difference between saying gender is not a social construct and being a feminine man doesn't make you trans, and then saying being a feminine man is inherently a bad thing, and soy <laughs> is what makes men feminine. I just, this video was so stupid. I mean, this is literally on the level of Alex Jones, and I know that Alex Jones was in all likelihood joking when he famously said that Floyd in the water was turning the frogs gay. This is literally the soy in our food is turning the men's gay. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, so that was this video. Good old Rebel Media. Again, I know some of you guys might like them, but I really don't care. Because <laughs> this video was idiotic. It was so idiotic, in fact, that there were people who were fans of Rebel Media who were commenting saying, This is bullshit. <laughs> and it had a pretty bad like to dislike ratio. <laughs> Like, that's how bad this video was. Yeah. So I hope I was able to be somewhat entertaining this video. Like, my brain completely <laughs> shut down watching this. I know this was low-hanging fruit. And probably some of the more videos, because it's going to be PragerU. And PragerU is pretty bad. More of the videos, like the right-wing anti-SJW, where they go too far videos, is going to be more low-hanging fruit. Normally go after low-hanging fruit. I'm sorry about that. So... Yeah, I I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Well, feel the phone